In this video, we're going to explore another directional derivative calculation. We're going to look at the function defined by x squared minus y squared. We're going to be at the point 2, 3. And because of the nature of the question we're going to be asked, it makes sense to draw this out. So we're at the point 2, 3. And there's a surface over top of this. And this is our x direction and our y direction. And what we're going to do is move directly towards the origin. And so that would define a vector like this. Let's call that vector v. That's the direction of travel we're going to take. And so that, that defines a vector. We're going to move in the direction v, which would be, well, it would be negative 2x and negative 3y. So it would be that. However, what we want is a slope in that direction. And we know that this is not a unit vector yet. If we're going to do our calculations for slope, we have to turn that into a unit vector. So we need a length one or unit vector in the same direction as v. And that's straightforward to calculate. We're going to define it as u indicating a unit vector is going to be the same as v but we're going to divide by its length. The idea being if it was length 5, if we scale it by 1 fifth, it'll turn down to be length 1. So quick calculation here with our vector. We have 2 squared, negative 2 squared rather, and negative 3 squared. Those are the components. And the vector itself is negative 2, negative 3. And if we scale this all out, we end up with 4 plus 9 is square root of 13. And we might as well just leave it that way as the entire vector. And that would give us a vector that looks like this. And that would be our u vector. Perfect. We're now in a position to proceed with our calculation of the directional derivative. We'll continue it on the next page. With our function being defined here as x squared minus y squared, we remember that we have to calculate the x slope. Well, that will be defined by 2x. And the y derivative will be careful with the signs. It'll be negative 2y because of the negative out front. We then evaluate that at the point 2, 3. So the x derivative at 2, 3 is going to be 2 times the x, which is 2 times 2, which is 4. The y derivative at 2, 3 is going to be negative 2 times the y coordinate, which is 3, so negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. We also have the other ingredient that we mentioned, 1 over root 13 times negative 2, negative 3. That's our vector, our direction that we're going to travel in. And then we can compute our slope in that direction. The derivative, or slope, of the surface at the point 2, 3 in the direction of u is going to be equal to the 4 value that we found. That's our x derivative at 2, 3 times the x component, well, the x component is the 1 over root 13 times the negative 2 part, plus, sorry, I captured that as u1, plus the slope in the y direction, negative 6. That's our fy at the point 2, 3. And then we multiply that by the y component of our direction, 1 over root 13 times minus 3, not comma, times minus 3, and that is what we would call our u2. How large a step in the y direction are we taking, and in what way, in this case, we're going left, or sorry, we're going down for the y direction. And then we compute and compute and compute. We end up with negative 8 over root 13, and then plus 18 over root 13, that's 10, or approximately 2.77. So what we would say is we would be moving uphill. So the direction u of negative 2, negative 3 is uphill because this quantity here is positive on the surface from the point 2, 3. And we can be more specific. It's steeper than a 45 degree angle. The slope is larger than one. So we can imagine 
going back a page again, if we were here on the surface and we were to take a small step towards the origin, we would be moving up in that diagram and up on that surface.